Tonight, the housing crisis gripping Cairns. Claims tourism will suffer from the backpack attacks. Household waste transforming local cane crops. 50-year-old cassowary released after rehab. Across Cairns and far north Queensland, this is 7 Local News with Rob Bruff and Joanne Desmond. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Welfare groups say the homeless crisis in Cairns will get worse if the state and federal governments don't take immediate action. Industry leaders from across Australia met in the far north today to plan how to tackle the issue. A police officer will undergo disease testing after he was allegedly spat on during an arrest. It's alleged a 50-year-old Aikenvale man spat in the 25-year-old constable's face after he was put in the back of the police van on Abbott Street last night. The Australian Tourism Export Council wants the proposed backpack tax to be wiped off the political agenda, fearing it will hurt the industry. The return of the LNP government means the tax is back on the table. But the horticulture sector has vowed to fight it. Household waste is being turned into compost for local sugarcane farmers. And they say it's producing astounding results for their crops. Treasurer Curtis Pitt has announced major works will begin on stage two of the Bruce Highway between Foster and Robert Roads. Mr Pitt inspected the site today, which is set to be expanded from four to six lanes. The Treasurer also acknowledged the plan for an Ag Force protest at his office on Saturday against new vegetation laws. A popular Mission Beach resident is back where she belongs after being released into the rainforest. Bella, a 50-year-old cassowary, was close to death when she was hit by a car. Still to come tonight, JCU takes a stand against bullying at universities. Snakes coming in from the cold as the winter sets in. Nice having you with us on 7 News. Local snake catchers are warning of slithery intruders as the reptiles seek some sun in the cool winter weather. It follows the discovery of Monty, a three-metre python caught in a backyard earlier this week. James Cook University researchers are developing and publishing videos to try to stop cyberbullying at Australian universities. They say it's a national issue that's rarely addressed at higher education facilities. I can oath the skin of the sport now, mate. Gavin Cooper's origin debut. Well, it pretty much had it all, didn't Certainly it? Certainly did, Bruffy. Look, of course, the Cowboys scored for Queensland. And while New South Wales won, Jonathan Thurston has labelled the Blues disrespectful for their post-match antics. We'll have more on that next. And a big inclusion for the Western Bulldogs as they arrive in town ahead of Saturday's AFL showdown at Kazali's. Welcome back to 7 News. Cowboy Gavin Cooper is adamant last night's taste of state of origin won't be his last following the 30-year-old's long-awaited debut. The Queensland forwards scored a dream try, but it was New South Wales who avoided a series whitewash in another controversial match with Jonathan Thurston labelling the Blues disrespectful for what they did post-match. Meanwhile, Cowboy Lachlan Coote has just started his NRL judiciary hearing for a contrary conduct charge stemming from Monday night's loss to Canberra. The Western Bulldogs have arrived in Cairns with a massive inclusion for Saturday's AFL game against the Gold Coast Suns at Kazali's. Star forward Tom Boyd will play after a recent club-imposed ban put his future with the Dogs in doubt. Cairns Taipans captain Cam Glidden has decided to stay in the far north after signing a new two-year deal with the Snakes. And just quickly back to origin, hard to argue with uh, JT there. Pretty mm -hmm. sure Paul Gallon earlier in the week called Queensland bad winners. What does that make the Blues from last night? Motivation. Yeah, how long till game one? <laughs> the next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. Good on you, mate. All right, after the break, Livio has all the weather details and Scotty Hillier has our fishing report as well. G'day, Olivia Regano with tonight's weather. Well, it's getting pretty cold out there. Massive blanket of cloud has completely obliterated the sun. There isn't a single spot in Queensland where it hasn't started raining at least a little bit and there's plenty more rain coming tomorrow and likely into the weekend as well. 
Temperatures today, 28 degrees at Cooktown. Mariba had a top of 22. The range in Cairns was 20 to 24 only. Afternoon humidity, 79%. At the satellite loop now, you can see a massive band of cloud has covered the state of Queensland entirely. It's due to an upper-level load pressure system that's constantly uh, developing and intensifying, and it will be slow-moving, and it will bring rain to all of Queensland over the next two days, but particularly the central area where a severe weather warning has been issued. If you look at today's chart, you'll see um, why it's been so cold. An unusual situation of cold southerly winds underrunning a thick blanket of cloud. Cold southerlies usually bring clear sky, so the sun hasn't had a chance to to heat up the ground. We've had maxes of eight and a half degrees at Roma, which has to be an all-time record, and there's a couple of others as well. On tomorrow's chart, on top of the upper level load producing widespread rain across Queensland, you can also see this offshore trough accentuating the winds along the coast, for which there's also a warning. Now the latest from the Weather Bureau. Boating forecast for Cairns Water is definitely not a great day on the water with a strong wind morning in place. Things should ease a little over the weekend though, but you may want to make other plans. High tides around quarter past six for Port Douglas and Cairns tomorrow morning. High tide will be after midday. North Tropical Coast and Tablelands, 50-50 chance of showers tomorrow. Winds up to 35 k's an hour. Cairns, 17 up to 23 degrees. Cooler for Atherton, just 19. Innisfail, only 21. Same for Mariba. Looking ahead for Cairns, looks like those rain patches may carry through the weekend. Cloud cover will keep the minimums out of single digits, so maximum temps will warm up and the, around the other side of the weekend. For Atherton, familiar conditions this time of year. With top temps in the low 20s only, you can probably bet on at least a couple of showers. I've had a request from Joe Kane to explain mirages, the strange images of shimmering water and upside-down mountains often seen over the dry plains of inland Australia. It's an optical illusion that occurs when light from a distant object gets reflected off a hot or cold air boundary before it gets to our eyes, making it look like it's hanging upside down in mid-air. Ancient seafarers apparently used mirages to catch a glimpse of faraway lands well before they appeared above the horizon, which is pretty clever, I think. Thanks, Joe, for the question, and thank you all for your loyal patronage to Seven. Uh, now it's over to Scott Hillier with the fishing report. Yeah, good on you, Livio. Well, wind and rain forecast for the weekend isn't ideal if you're planning on wetting a line. Tip for the diehards will be to find a little spot tucked in out of the breeze. Good run on the tide. That full moon is on the way, so that's a bit of saving grace. Here's a couple of tips. I'll be back here next Thursday night. Seven local news. Have a top weekend. Great, thanks for that, Scotty. And that's Seven News for this Thursday. Thanks very much for your company. Just a reminder, of course, we have a replay over on 7-2 coming up in a moment. Otherwise, we'll catch you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.